Is it a crisis or simply a matter of time marching on? That's a question many in New York's black political community have been asking since the void was created by the state's two most powerful African-American politicians, Governor David Patterson and Congressman Charlie Rangel, both becoming entangled in ethical questions that have left both weakened. I don't think it's a crisis, you know. Harlem Councilwoman Inez Dickens. Leadership in any community uh, changes. It, it has to. Uh, uh, people retire. They die out. So it's, it's ever evolving. Dickens sees a transformation, a passing of the torch. Bronx Councilwoman Helen Foster agrees. I don't think it's a crisis. I think that it is clearly a time where you're seeing the potential changing of the guard. That old guard was Harlem's gang of four. Percy Sutton, Governor David Patterson's father, Basil, David Dinkins, and of course, Wrangell. They were New York's black political power center. Not anymore. But it's not just a generational transformation, it's a geographic one too. Harlem has been the center of black culture and politics for decades. Now, it's Brooklyn. What you're seeing is a kind of unraveling of a traditional group of politicians coming out of Harlem who were responsible for, for black politics in the city. Um, and I think that because of that shift, uh, we're starting to see it happening, happening in other places in New York City, like in Brooklyn, where you have a group of politicians who are the kind of post-civil rights group who are largely taking up leadership positions. So far, that's meant less concentrated power, but will it also mean less effective leadership? Jamani Williams is among the newest of the new breed, a self-described insurgent freshly elected to the city council from Flatbush. One of his first acts has been to help found a progressive caucus consisting of 12 members who are black, white, Asian, and Latino. I think that's a way, even though at some point we're not, we won't be insurgents anymore, but that's a way to say we're not the same kind of people who you call the machine. Foster sees her generation not only as a break from the past, but also as a continuation of the central struggle for people of color. Our struggles and, and what we're able to identify are very much the same. I think there's not a black elected official that isn't aware of racial profiling, whether the police department says it is or it isn't. We, those that are being profiled, know it exists. We know that racism is alive and well. We know when we talk about, and people talk about this post-racial America, it doesn't exist. Race is still, and racism is still alive and well. But our experiences and our approaches to them are different. But any talk of crisis drives Brooklyn Councilman Charles Barron crazy. If it was such a crisis in black leadership, then Billy Thompson would not have almost beaten a billionaire, a billionaire, 4.6% uh, when his polls were saying 18%. Do we have divisions? Do we have problems? Just like the white community does. Nobody talks about the crises in the white community. Still, those divisions are the very thing that Dickens warns could sap black political power. A unified position, which is where I come from, is where empowerment grows out of and not division. It's like having a finger. What am I going to do with this? But if I put five together, I've got a fist. I'm J.D. Dapper for City Limits.